Uh, so welcome. Once again, my name is Alfred Engel. Uh, we'll start with a little bit of an introduction, get into what is engineering transfer, talk about the South Seattle STEM community a bit. Uh, what does the engineering pathway look like? So what, do you, what sort of classes are you going to expect to take at South? Talk a little bit about our program and talk about some job opportunities out there because uh, there's lots of great engineering opportunities here in the Seattle Sound region. All right. So just a little background about me. I also started at a community college, which is uh, really cool. Um, I started actually in Texas. That's where I grew up at Tarrant County College. So I know what it is, what it's like to be a transfer student. I have that experience. Um, I transferred to Vanderbilt University, which was kind of cool. Uh, I, it was a private school that I thought I couldn't afford, but uh, the nice thing about private schools is they often have lots of financial aid because they have donors. Um, so I got really lucky in the fact that um, I was able to find that funding. Um, I got out of school in a time uh, where to practice structural engineering, you need a master's degree. So I got a master's degree in structural engineering and geomechanics. Geo being earth, mechanics being movement, the study of movement. Think about that geomechanics, we're talking about earthquake design. So I have that's my kind of my background educational experience as an earthquake design. Um, and then before I started teaching at South, I worked two years in industry as a structural engineer. Uh, I want to show you a couple projects that I worked on. Uh, this one you've probably seen if you've taken the ferry. This is the walkway to the ferry. Um, this Coleman Tower sits right on Alaska Street. And this is the walkway that kind of takes you from uh, first over Western and Alaska to, uh, to the ferry terminal. Um, this is a 16 story building. It's an apartment complex with some pretty uh, stunning views of the sound. Um, so that's uh, one of the jobs that I worked on when I first got out of school. And then later, a little bit later, I worked on this job, one Recon Hill phase two. Um, phase two is the smaller building over here in the back. Uh, you'll notice that uh, that's the building that was built after 2009, after the big uh, real estate crash of 2009. So um, it's kind of funny how the there's a huge size comparison of pre-2009 budget and after-2009 budget. Um, so just a little detail about me so you uh, kind of get an idea of who I am and my background. Um, but I want to talk specifically about what engineering transfer is. Um, our engineering transfer degree is geared towards students that want to become design engineers. Um, design engineering in different fields, including uh, these are the kind of the big majors that you expect to see civil, environmental, mechanical, um, and aerospace. Aerospace is sometimes its own major, sometimes it's part of mechanical engineering, and then also electrical engineering. So these are kind of the major design engineer types that we uh, serve here at South. Uh, just as a reminder, we are a transfer degree. This is a transfer degree. So most design engineers need a four-year bachelor's degree to practice engineering, which means that after you finish your course, we're here at South, you're going to be transferring to a, another uh, school to do your upper division coursework. Um, a lot of our students end up at UW Seattle or Tacoma. We also see a lot of students going to Seattle U and Seattle Pacific University, lots of other little schools here around the Sound, and some even make it all the way out to Washington State University. Just so you know, if you have any questions or if I'm talking a little bit too fast, feel free to let me know in the chat. I wanna kind of move through this kind of quickly so I can get to your questions, um, but I also you know, wanna make sure that we're uh, understanding. So big, Thing that I want to talk a little bit about is what's the difference between engineering design and engineering technologists, because there's a lot of two-year degrees that are geared towards engineering technologists, um, engineering or engineering technology. Engineering design is theoretical. We focus more on the physics and the mathematics to look at different objects or processes um, versus technologists are more on the hands-on side. They're typically creating prototypes, working on drafting, or working on different manufacturing 
techniques. Um, engineering designers work a lot more on plans and our coursework is more geared towards advanced math and theory courses, which means you get to really understand how all these things work and really design some really cool things with your experience. Um, our program, this program is offered at South, Central, and North. I can only speak about South's program, and I want to talk a little bit about South's STEM community, which I think is a really strong and important part of taking classes, engineering classes here at South. Um, so I want to, uh, but just keep that in mind as you go through this. Not all the community stuff exists at every campus, right? Like, uh, like they said before, South is a unique campus. It's a unique college. Um, we are part of a district and there is some back and forth, but we are very uh, unique in each of our own ways. So some of the cool things that happen at South related to STEM, um, we have a high powered rocket tree club. Um, we have a maker space. I wanna talk a little bit about the RST scholarship and also our STEM core program. Um, but first let's do rocket club because who doesn't love a good rocket? Um, this gives you a sense of scale for our rockets. You can see me here in the background as we try to uh, prep this rocket for launch here. Um, these are high powered rockets. Um, if you've ever shot those little Estes rockets, um, big, a big Estes rocket uses a C or a D size motor. The motors that we're using on our rockets are uh, H motors. So if you're launching with a B, which is probably typical motor, you can count up the alphabetical letters C, D, E, F, G, H. So it's 10 to the six more impulse. Um, so 10 to the six is almost, uh, that's gonna be 1 million times the amount of impulse. Um, these rockets, uh, we have to go out to Eastern Washington to launch because they are very, uh, uh, <laughs> they drift so far that uh, we wouldn't be able to launch them in uh, Seattle, anywhere on the Western Sound safely because there's so many airports around us. Um, we also do some outreach to the local scout groups uh, and also with the Museum of Flight in the summer. I got a question. Is there a liquid motor rocket club at South? Um, we don't do liquid motors at South. Uh, liquid motors are uh, usually uh, something that you have to do, you have to have years of experience before you get into because the dangers of liquid motors, um, and they're also not as reliable as the uh, as the solid mass motors. Um, usually, to launch a liquid motor uh, legally, you need to have uh, like. You have to be a third level certified uh, high power rocket tree cer certificate. So that usually takes about two or three years of practice and you have to be basically apprentice under somebody with that experience. So at this point, we don't do liquid motors, but we do high powered rocketry. We do telemetry with GPS and we do, uh, I would really like to get into uh, getting some rocket gliders because I just think those are really fun. Um, remote co controlled gliders are something that we've had at some of our launches. Um, all right. So that's a little bit about our rocket club. We also have a makerspace. I'll show you some pictures in a sec here. Um, makerspaces are all about designing prototype and building. So you get a little bit of hands-on experience and get some practice with working through your design ideas with some uh, high tech and low tech fabrication skills involved. Um, so we have 3D printing, laser cutting, uh, vinyl cutter for making stickers, details, and um, it's really helpful for making stencils for spray paint. We've used those for some of our rocketry designs. Uh, fiber arcs is super popular as well. And we also do a fair amount of uh, soldering and fabrication um, and kind of linked also to our uh, Engineering 204 class. Uh, yeah, uh, got a question about CNC machining. Uh, we do have uh, some CNC work. Um, if you take there, we do, uh, we have a CNC plasma course. If you're interested in doing CNC plasma, it's a little bit more approachable than CNC machining, but uh, there are, we do have a couple of machines in the makerspace 
if you're interested in learning more about CNC machining or routing. Give you some pictures of some of our capabilities. One of the things that we did uh, probably three years ago when we first got our 3D printers, we have Prusa machines. So students actually built them, built these themselves uh, from a kit. And then uh, we've uh, got access to a couple laser cutters on cam uh, campus that we use to uh, create robotics parts and things like that. Uh, one of the really big draws for our STEM program is the RST program. This is a ready, set, transfer. That's what it stands for. It's really designed to help students when they first come into the college to connect with our STEM community through events like workshops and speakers. Um, it's a really fantastic uh, grant from the National Science Foundation. Um, it's one of the best ones on campus, best scholarships on campus. It, uh, it gives you up to $2,500 per quarter, which pays through your classes, books, and a little bit extra um, to offset some of the costs of going to college. Um, it hooks you up with a STEM mentor, somebody who meets with you at least twice a quarter to talk through uh, hurdles in your educational path and help plan for the future, figure out how to transfer, how to write a personal statement, all those things you're going to need to do as you get towards the end of your career here at South. Um, we also have undergraduate research on campus, um, and there's a little bit of funding tied to that scholarship, so you can buy materials uh, with your uh, research mentor. And the cool thing about this is this thing just renews until you transfer, so it supports you uh as all the way until you're uh to to transfer from south and that's the rst program um another thing that we offer that's new to south is the stem core cohort group a cohort is a group of students that you're uh kind of at your level working on the same classes that you're working on um, one of the cool things about this cohort is it also comes with a paid internship opportunity. So we help you write your application and get you your application and to work at places like NASA. Um, a lot of the STEM core students work at our uh, get a job at a national lab if they're interested in uh, biology, chemistry, physics, those sorts of things. Uh, I'm, and also engineering. Right. Um, and one of the really cool things is you also get access to a student support specialist who is uh, there to help you uh, navigate a lot of the, the challenges of college and, and help you with those internship opportunities or any of your classes, connect you to resources on campus. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some advantages of an engineering transfer program here at South. One of the cool things is we have pretty small class sizes. There's around 15 students or so. So you get a lot of face time with the instructor. I get to know all of our engineering students really well, which is a really awesome benefit. Um, all of the engineers that teach at South have real world uh, design experience. I come from structural engineering uh, for, for Francisco, who teaches some of our intro to engineering classes, he used to work at Boeing. Uh, so we have a lot of really cool design experience coming to teach you. Um, one of the really awesome things is our course catalog also includes most sophomore level courses. So you're really getting in those first two years taken care of. That means that you have, you know, specialized courses for mechanical, aerospace, civil engineering, uh, computer engineering, and electrical. Um, you're getting those kind of specialized courses. So when you transfer, you're ready to go and you can finish your degree in two years. Um, I did not have the benefit of doing that. It actually took me two and a half, almost three years to get my degree. Um, so uh, I'm a little bit envious of you in that way. Um, we do a lot of hands-on learning uh, using the Makerspace and other uh, things, but this is one of my favorite projects that we do. Um, we do a truss analysis. So in statics, we do a lot of analysis of truss structures like this. Um, so you actually build this bridge. We have uh, each of these uh, little black boxes here is a force sensor. So we actually hang weights on this bridge and measure the 
internal forces on the bridge. And then we do some analysis. We practice our hand calculations. We show that, hey, how are our hand calcs different than actual values? Um, how are the assumptions that we're making when we build these mathematical models, how are they different than reality, right? Um, that's, that's one of the fun things that we do a lot in engineering is talk about how to model things uh, mathematically. Um, and then we also look at these using advanced analysis software. So kind of looking at this three different ways to analyze how is what we do for design a little bit different than reality and how do we kind of uh, make sense of that? How do we make design decisions knowing that our values aren't always 100% re real, but close enough to get as uh, useful results? So this is an example of some student work on these bridges. Um, and I also wanted to add a little, some of the student quotes, things that we've heard from students. Um, engineering students have said, uh, everybody wants to be in class and learn. It's a very positive space to be in. Uh, we had one student uh, who said, hey, I really love the small class sizes. Some of the class sizes at my old school were between 50 and 300 students, depending on the class. Um, that's really, really big. And a lot of those, uh, a lot of big cl uh, traditional classes like physics or chemistry, um, our class sizes at South are much, much smaller than that. Um, seeing examples in class really helped me succeed. Most of the class is practicing problems and I don't lecture a whole lot. I let you learn by doing. Um, you're not gonna be good at designing if you don't practice design. So we do that in class um, and we make the mistakes in class together and learn from them because um, that's just part of the process. Prototyping, making mistakes is a big part of what we do. Um, we do a lot of project-based learning kind of related to that. Um, a little bit about the pathway for uh, engineering. Now, we're going pretty fast here, so I'm going to slow down a little bit and uh, see if there's any questions. Anybody have any questions at this point about South Seattle College engineering programs yet? We're going to talk a little bit about the pathway and some job opportunities out there but I do wanna open it up for questions. All right, so I don't see any questions. We'll go ahead and jump to the next part. Talk a little bit about the engineering pathway. So one of the interesting things about our engineering program, uh, engineering programs are really designed about students coming in at a calc level, um, which is a pretty high level in math. And, a lot of our students are coming in a little bit lower than that or need to take a few courses before they get into those calculus courses. So most of our students are taking our major related program. That's an MRP. And I'll put that in the chat. I didn't type it in our slides here, but it's the major related program, MRP. And that means that you get a special program that's that gets you ready gives you a three plus two, so it, you can finish all your courses that you need. So once you transfer, you finish your degree in two years at your uh, transfer institution. Uh, the nice thing about our classes is because so many of our classes require these prerequisites, which is kind of the uh, that our programs look a lot like cohorts. You're going to be in a, a lot of the same classes with the same peers, so you can form study groups and friendships and uh, the sorts of things that will help you succeed in the classroom. Um, I really love that about our program here at South. Um, just as you, uh, and just as a reminder, a big part of this MRP is you're gonna get, you do three years here or two and a half, uh, how many credits, how many quarters you need to finish up. And then you'll transfer and fi finish your degree in two years at wherever you transfer. The nice thing about our MRP program is it means that lots of our students qualify um, to enter. You all you need is to place into Math 98 and to place into English 101. And I would say that's a really big portion of our students. Very few students, uh, or most of our students, kind of fit into that that category. 
Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, degree options that you have here, uh, or like, or some of the career options that you can uh, you can get with a engineering major. Um, we'll start because I'm a little bit biased. We'll talk a little bit about my old job in civil structural engineering. Um, these are numbers pulled from WorkSource in uh, Seattle. So these are like local numbers based off of Washington State, West Sound specifically. Um, the median wage, that's kind of like the midpoint wage for civil and environmental engineers is around $93,000. Remember, this is the middle wage, so this is not what you're going to make right out of school, but it might be uh, what you're making after five or six years of working in industry. Um, I think for me, when I started, I was making around $72,000 and then uh, making six, uh, getting raises as I got more experience and was taking on bigger design challenges. Um, some of the industries that you might work in as a civil or environmental engineering is doing environmental impact studies. That's a really important thing. So for building a new building or structure, bridge, whatever, um, what is going to be the impact on the environment, right? If we build roads, where is that runoff going to go? And what sort of damage could that have on the local uh, environments, habitats? for animals and things like that. Um, road design is a big one. Uh, transportation is a huge part of civil environmental engineering and not just cars, but buses, trains. Uh, how do we interface with uh, airports, right? How do we get people through the airport onto a plane, right? That's a, uh, a big part of transportation engineering. Uh, dealing with water is a big part of uh, environmental engineering, water, wastewater, and then uh, my old uh, job working as a structural designer, designing bridges and buildings. Do we have any civil or environmental engineering students in the house? Anybody interested in doing those sorts of things? Let me know in the chat. Um, one of the most popular majors here at South for engineering is mechanical. Um, lots of industries for mechanical. Uh, heating, ventilation, HVAC is a huge portion. I used to work with a lot of mechanical engineers who worked in that field as a structural engineer. Um, aerospace, right? If you're working, if you want to work for Boeing or Blue Origin or any of the other aerospace uh, companies in town that support Boeing, uh, Mechanical engineering might be a degree that you're interested in. Um, controls engineering, I think they talked a little bit about robotics, um, but this is also lots of uh, designing how how do we how do humans interface with this technology is a really big part of mechanical engineering. And you know when it comes down to it, vehicle design, right? Designing cars and trains and airplanes, right? This is all you know vehicle design that uh, mechanical engineers would be building. We get pretty good at that. Any other, any, any mechanical engineers here today? All right. Well, one of, the, the other other big major that we see is electrical engineering. Um, and I and I kind of put mechanical engineers, if you're interested in aerospace, aerospace typically falls under mechanical engineering. Um, I know UW Seattle has a specified program, but a lot of uh, most of the mechanic, most of the uh, people that I know that work at Boeing actually are, a lot of them end up having just straight mechanical engineering degrees. So. Uh, sometimes that means getting a mechanical engineering major and specializing, doing a little bit of minor coursework to get a uh, aerospace minor. But sometimes that just means taking a few classes here or there to prepare you to work in that field. 
Um, so there's a lot of mechanical engineering who are aerospace. So if I, if I don't have specific information about that, just keep in mind that in that number, that's a lot of aerospace engineers. Um, electrical engineers, uh, this blew my mind. Their median wage is $120,000, woo. Um, but they work in a lot of different industries. I think electrical engineers and mechanical are like the two bigger, uh, two biggest uh, engineering types in the US. Um, power systems, power grids, generation of power, controls design, robotics and manufacturing. I get a lot of students who want to, you know, make a change for the environment. And I tell a lot of them, like, if you really want to make a change, like, think about energy. How do we transmit it? How do we uh, optimize it? Um, electrical engineering might be something that you're interested in. All right. So we're making pretty good time here. Um, I'm going to open it up for uh, some general questions. Uh, what questions do we have about engineering or the STEM community at South? I'm happy to bounce around in the slides if you have a question from a previous slide. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question or throw it in the chat. Love to hear from you what you're interested in. Um, hello. Hi. <laughs> I go to the North. Uh, my name is Hyun Su Yu and I'm from South Korea, but I lived here for long enough and I'm a resident here. Anyways, um, so I go to North. I'm trying to finish my two year or two and a half year um, engineering mm -hmm. associates transfer degree. Mm -hmm. Um, I plan to go to UW, uh, Seattle or Bothell. Okay. Um, anyways, that's just um part about me um i just started some projects with my friends mm -hmm. um well i started it and i wanted people to join and my friends were interested so they joined so we were doing this project i was the one who asked about liquid motors yeah um yeah so so we we're planning to do that um it's gonna be a journey and yeah so we're going to make a club at north um and i know that making a club will get us uh 300 or so dollars mm -hmm. um as like a starting you know uh budget okay um i was wondering if any of the like seattle colleges in general had any kind of um funding if a group of students were uh, working on a project and if they provide something uh reasonably you know, working, let's say we, we make like a working decent thrust model, you know, just a working model of a liquid mm -hmm. rocket engine. Will there be a way for us to get more fundings from the school? Uh, I can't speak to North specifically. I think you're kind of, uh, I, 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 but I know that at South, that's the sort of thing where you could ask the club center um, you know, a lot of our students who end up, you know, our rocket club asked for money from the club center, also asked for money from student government to support. Um, they helped, helped us with travel plans to get to Eastern Washington, uh, helped with mileage. And, uh, I think, uh, for what, for, for a while, they, they were on board to help us pay for a bus. We didn't end up needing one, but that was, that was the other thing. So, you know, that's the sort of question that I can answer a little bit more uh if you have more follow-up questions i'm happy to answer i also want to you know keep us a little bit grounded here we don't have a whole lot of time for questions here okay thank you all right um are there other stem related clubs yeah uh we used to have a uh a women in sim club i think right now at south seattle college we kind of have a we're, we're just now all coming back to campus. So we're starting to see an uptick in those clubs. Um, we talked, I talked a little bit about RST and uh, the STEM core group. Um, so RST, one of the things that we see a lot of our RST scholarship students doing is taking that money and using it as a, uh, 
a leadership grant and they'll use it to start a student club. So that's actually how our, our rocket club started. Um, we had a makerspace uh, student group that kind of formed around that as well. Um, and we also have the STEM core group, which isn't technically a student club, but is very similar. Um, so we have a, a lot of those sort of student community, student run communities on at South. We don't always call them student clubs, but in a lot of ways, they offer a lot of the same things of, you know, creating a space for you to meet with other people that are interested in STEM, that are interested in doing these sorts of projects um, and working together, helping you with your classes, that sort of thing. Um, Any other questions? I did. I do see a private. What can I say? Uh, about, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, just checking for understanding. But um, so going to like South Seattle is making it easier for students to transfer, transfer, and get their bachelor's degree, right? Yes, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, uh, one of the things I like about our program, we've designed it to make it uh, a degree plan. So once you get your MRP plan figured out, and uh, even if you, like, I think they at North, they still, they uh, call it something a little bit different. They still call it an associates in science, but at South, we have the MRP program. And that means that you do the courses that you need. It's tailored to what you need. So when you transfer, you have all the credits that you need at your transfer institution to be to to take uh, junior level courses, those upper level courses, and prepare you for those. Um, that's really our goal here at South. I had another question in the chat. Uh, can I say anything about pursuing a mathematics degree, uh, considering going into teaching? I don't know a whole lot about mathematics degrees. Um, I don't have one, uh, but if you stick around, I am. We, are, we can always connect you. Uh, one of the things, once we go back to the main room, if you have additional questions that didn't get answered, we'll stick around and help you answer those. Um, the, a lot of, you'll see a lot of your engineering students in those math courses. For me, I think I was one class away from getting a math minor um, once I took all of my, uh, my four credit uh, engineering classes. So that's kind of a, uh, there's a lot of overlap between students that are interested in math or engineering. So that's maybe how you ended up here as well. Any other questions? We got about three more minutes left here in our main room. I, I had some common questions that I wanted to throw up here on the board. Uh, if you had questions about when it, when we meet, uh, when the classes are offered, you know, how do we, how do you balance with school? And you know, do students need any exp expensive equipment or materials? Um, typically, our costs, our classes are pretty low cost. Um, for engineering, especially, I use a lot of open resource materials and uh, try to save you a little bit of money there in the textbook. So you're not paying for the, the 25th edition of Hibbler that has not changed since uh, I went to school. All right. Well, it was great meeting all of you. If you have any additional questions, you can always email me at albert.ingle at seattlecolleges.edu. I'm going to throw that in the chat quickly here. Race against time. And I'll stick around a little bit after if you have additional questions.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. We appreciate you, you being here and thanks for, for coming on back. And thank you again to the, the presenters. We're, we're just so grateful for your time this evening and certainly the, the expertise as well. So we, as the slide says, we hope you enjoyed your session. So it was really cool to field some of the questions about why should I go? What, I'm interested in this. So we just appreciate everybody's hunger for, for more information. All right, next slide, please. So we have a little bit of feedback here. Students, future students, we certainly encourage you to fill this out. Why do we do this? It's because we wanna make sure that we get you to the correct next place. You've had an opportunity now to learn from experts,